Well, to discuss Australia's bid for a seat on the UN Security Council and where it fits into our foreign policy goals, I'm joined now by Benjamin Herskovich. He's a policy analyst at the Centre for Independent Studies. Um, let me start off by asking you, in the Prime Minister's speech to the UN General Assembly, she spruiked Australia's record of service. She talked about East Timor, Solomon Islands, for example, how Australia is the largest non-NATO contributor to Afghanistan. Is that all enough to warrant a seat on the Security Council? I think Australia is in a very good position to get a seat on the United Nations Security Council. We have been a very active member of the United Nations. Our history goes back right to the creation of the United Nations in San Francisco. We are involved in a whole host of UN peacekeeping missions. The issue though I think is more whether or not getting a temporary seat on the United Nations Security Council is going to be particularly beneficial for Australia. It seems to me as if Ultimately, the value associated with having a temporary seat is largely symbolic. The United Nations Security Council is composed of a host of temporary members as well as the five permanent members. And in actual fact, the real power of the UN Security Council lies with the five permanent members. Because who they have veto, veto power. power. Precisely. Indeed. But the vote is drawing closer and there has been a lot of debate about the merits of whether Australia should have embarked on this endeavour in the first place. I guess the point is we have. We've tried to bid for a Security Council seat. Um, tens of millions of dollars have been spent. Do you think it was folly to, to launch this endeavour? I think the problem now is that ultimately this debate is largely post factum bluster. The money has already been spent, the diplomatic lobbying has largely been concluded. However, the debate is valuable in the sense that it has the makings of the start of a serious conversation about Australia's priorities diplomatically in terms of foreign policy broadly conceived. I think there is some symbolic value to being a temporary member of the United Nations Security Council, but I doubt whether or not this is actually an effective use of government funds. It seems to me as if our key focus should be on our region. Because I was going to ask you, are there more, uh, are there better ways of pursuing our foreign policy objectives? I'm thinking of, uh, we've got disputes between Japan and China, for example, over territory. Uh, we've got India, of course, where we don't have such a great uh, relationship and there have been a lot of efforts to try to repair our relationship. Are all of those foreign policy ideals something that could have just been as easily pursued without this UN Security Council seat? I think you're entirely right. The United Nations Security Council and the UN more broadly is very appealing. It has a lovely reflective glow, but in some respects it is a castle in the sky. The key business of Australian diplomacy is in East Asia, on the subcontinent, in Southeast Asia. At the moment we're seeing a dispute between Japan and China over islands in the East China Sea. Chinese state media has warned that this dispute has the potential to sour trade relations between Japan and China. Now Japan and China are Australia's two most important destinations for exports, which means that a dispute like that could have a very serious and real impact on Australia, and I think this is a region where we should be focusing our attention. Uh, but a dispute like that could ultimately end up before the UN Security Council, and of course China is a permanent member, so perhaps it would be a good thing if Australia was a, was, had a council seat. The issue though is that if it did go to the United Nations Security Council, that means that the issue has already gone too far. What we need to be doing is engaging with the region so the disputes like the dispute in the East China Sea or the dispute in the South China Sea are solved through diplomacy in our region and do not actually go to the United Nations Security Council. The other problem is that the United Nations Security Council has both China and Japan sorry, China and the United States of America as permanent members. Mm -hmm. Now Australia has a very strong security relationship with the United States and a very strong trade relationship with China. Being a temporary member of the United Nations Security Council may actually pose a serious problem for Australia because you we say would we'd be, be caught in the middle of disputes? Precisely. Right? Pulled in two directions by two very important countries for us. And in turn do you think that would actually endanger our foreign policy because we would have to, we'd be forced, unless we abstain from voting, Australia if it had a seat on the Security Council would be forced to either vote with members like the United States in some cases, abstain or vote with members like China? I think you're entirely right. This has the potential to create serious difficulties for Australia. Australia cannot afford to either jeopardise its deep and long-standing security relationship with the United States of America, but at the same time we obviously cannot afford to jeopardise our deep and growing economic relationship with China, which means that we need to tread very carefully on this issue and it may well be the case that the best thing to do is stand back entirely and not get involved in forums where both of these key powers for us have a veto power. A final question, perhaps a, a little cheeky, but if you had to have a bet, do you think Australia is going to get this Security Council seat? I am not a particularly 
an enthusiastic person when it comes to betting, but if I was going to bet, I would bet on Australia. I think we are in a very good position. We embody UN values. We would be a very active member of the United Nations Security Council, and I think all things all go well for us. Well, we'll find out next month. Benjamin Herskovich, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.